thanks everyone for coming. Can you hear me? Yeah. Everything fine? Awesome. So we're here today uh, to talk about AeroMeta and what we believe can be the future of functional programming in Kotlin and also an excellent tool to build tooling and the foundation of many other tools as part of the Kotlin compiler. And we are here today, we're going to present you a little bit of an overview of how the Kotlin compiler works and many other things to give you, bring you up to date as to what the tooling looks like in the Kotlin ecosystem. And my name is uh, Raul Raja. I am the CTO and co-founder at 47 Degrees. And I am honored here to share this stage today with my friend and colleague, Simon, who has been helping along building Aero uh, for a very long time and is now also part of the 47 Degrees team. So thank you, Simon. Thank you, Raul. Uh, so my name is Simon. I'm a senior engineer at 47 Degrees, and I've been a long time Aero maintainer. Uh, mostly, uh, I've been working on aero optics and aero effects. Before we dive in, into any of the aero meta stuff, I would first like to take a look at how the Kotlin compiler works and how it takes our program and goes through several phases and makes the binaries out of our programs. But before that, I want to thank Jetro and Isra for helping us with these amazing visuals to help us explain how the compiler works and how aero meta works with the compiler uh, so we can hopefully explain this to you in a clear way using their amazing visuals. So before the Kotlin compiler can do anything, we of course first need to write our program. And the program that you see here uh, is what we envision the comprehension syntax could look like for Kotlin in 2020. So once we have written our program, the compiler goes into the parsing phase. And during the parsing phase, the compiler will read the code from disk and it will parse into an AST. An AST, or abstract syntax tree, is a tree representing the structure of the code, in this case, for Kotlin. And in Kotlin, the abstract syntax tree is built upon uh, the PSI library by JetBrains, which is the program structure interface, or model, or AST that IntelliJ uses intern internally in all their tooling. So this gives us also tight integration with the tooling. Um, and once that this AST is parsed, the compiler moves into the analysis phase. And during the analysis phase, the compiler will try and give semantics to this tree uh, in context of the Kotlin language and the Kotlin type system. And after that, once the, the semantics have been given, the compiler will move into type checking in the resolution phase, which is also a part of the analysis phase. But in this phase, the actual type checking happens. And for the originally parsed tree, the compiler will associate descriptors, and this descriptor contain all the type information, all the semantics of the Kotlin language, which are necessary for IntelliJ to render their toolings and inspections, and the compiler for in the next phase to produce the binaries. <coughs> so once this is all created, the compiler can go into the code generation phase, and it cre can create the binaries for the different platforms. Kotlin currently supports GVM, JavaScript and native, and we can generate binaries for all these platforms or for the platform you desire. Once all this is done, the binaries are created, the compiler finally finishes, and it compiles successfully. And now I will give the word back to Raul, and he will guide us through how Arameta supplements the compiler to give us metaprogramming powers. So thank you, Simon. So, so far what we've seen is like the compiler has different phases, and depending on what you're doing in each phase, you're going to have different kinds of powers. So we saw a first phase in which you're going to be able to parse the code and get the tree, then a second phase in which you can analyze and type check that tree and give it semantics, and then finally, if all went well, the Kotlin compiler is going to proceed into code generation. So what is Meta do? with this whole, because what we've shown you so far is just how the Kotlin compiler works today if you don't use AeroMeta. So AeroMeta is a metaprogramming library that sits at the lowest level and interfaces in all cooperative phases with the Kotlin compiler, giving you the chance as a developer to alter the outcome of compilation at any point and produce other kinds of programs from the initial input that the user provided. As we saw earlier, at the beginning, we're just going to have a bunch of source code. And then we need to get that source code structure. 
The compiler is going to go into the parsing phase, now powered with error meta, and it's going to create a tree representation. So we're going to have now an immutable tree with everything that we've written, declarations such as classes, functions, properties, and all the different elements allowed by the Kotlin language. And at this point, we give you a super high level feature, which is not existent in the Kotlin compiler at the moment, and that is the ability to transform the compiler trees before they are processed and then fed into type checking and further code generation. This allows you to inspect the structure of the code the user wrote and use it for further code generation, tooling, or any other use case you can imagine that can be done with MetaParameter. Additionally, historically, you might have seen, like, if how many of you are in the Scala community? OK, fair amount. If you've ever worked with a macro library or with a library that performs meta expansion beyond the source code, you have realized that when you go to IntelliJ, it looks red line. It, the, there's a lot of type errors. And the reason that's happening is because whenever you generate code, you have to also provide synthetic descriptors, which are objects containing the information as to the structure you're generating, so that the IDE and other tooling knows what to do with those. For example, auto-completion or any of the other features the IDE provides. Aero Meta takes care of that automatically for you. For any code generation that you perform or any meta expansion you perform on a tree, Aero Meta is going to automatically create the synthetic descriptors and make IntelliJ IDEA happy. And by the way, this is not restricted to just Kotlin, because this is applying to all other uh, language and IDE set of tools that uh, JetBrains uh, support. So you can, you're going to be able to use Aero Meta in more places than just Kotlin in the near future. Once, uh, as we mentioned, we've gone through the code, we've parsed it, we gave him semantics, now the code has information about the types, we can generate automatically the synthetic resolution and feed it to IntelliJ IDEA and also to the Kotlin compiler for you. We can go into code generation. And the Kotlin compiler supports JVM, JS, native, multiple platforms. And on top of that, they are coming up with a new experimental backend system called the IR system. And that stands for the Intermediate Representation uh, Format System. And what that's going to do, it's going to allow you to write an emit bytecode that is multi-platform, because there is further interpreters for each one of the different platforms that can use IR. So it's going to be even easier uh, to target all the different platforms in the Kotlin language. And then finally, our program is uh, type check, and everything works, and it has been enhanced by Aerometa. Not only Aerometa gives you, as I saw you, the quote system to do tree transformation, but you also have access to interception in every single of the faces uh, of the compiler. Here we can see an example of some of the meta DSL uh, combinators. We have a one-to-one -one mapping to what the compiler offers as extensions so that people that have existing compiler plugins for the Kotlin compiler can migrate to Meta. But instead of using the approach where you have to subclass or use this OOP technique to hook into the compiler, AeroMeta gives you a full functional API that are simple functions and composable that you can use to create further and bigger workflows. For example, in this case, we can observe how we have update configuration. That is a phase that allows us to modify the compiler before it runs, altering the configuration. We can modify the dependency injection of the compiler with a storage component replacing services the compiler uses in different stages of the compilation. Or we can create a higher level API, like enable IR, which is actually built with update configuration by setting a flag in the compiler to enable the experimental IR backend. So everything that you can imagine that you can do with the Kotlin compiler that it's relevant in the different phases from the point of view of metaprogramming, we are supporting. And this is just an example of the first phases. But as if you observe in the rest, there is uh, methods, and these are all low-level methods that allow you to hook into any part of the compilation process. For example, if you were in code generation and then you wanted to replace what Kotlin means for equality when the equals function is called, that is something you can do. You can observe that symbol and then in code generation, replace that symbol for your own implementation 
of equality that can potentially be based on type classes or any other mechanism. And now we thought that how, what would be the best way to show you what it feels like programming with meta? So as part of the error effort, the error community is trying to bring stronger functional features to the Kotlin language and, and to the Kotlin compiler. And one of the first features we are building uh, that will be ready around November and is going to come with the first alpha release of Meta. It's monad comprehensions for Kotlin and all the Java and Kotlin data types. So I'm going to hand it over to Simon and he's going to show us how you can build a plugin with Aero Meta. <clears throat> so as Arul has already mentioned, we also provide a high level DSL. He has already mentioned that this happens in the analysis phase. This is before type checking. So the compiler plugin that I want to use here as an example is a comprehensions plugin, plugin that we've al already been seeing throughout the slides. And to create a plugin, it's very simple. You just create a named unique identifier, and you create a transform and transformation that returns a list of extension phases. These extension phases can be created within a meta block. And in this case, we're only creating a single extension phase called quote, which is our quote high-level DSL extension phase. And using a filter function, we can filter through the AST that was parsed by the compiler, and we can select nodes based on our filter function. In this case, we are filtering a KT dot qualified expression, which is a dot function call, for example, IO dot FX. And within that, within that filter function, we're also going to look if without that function call, there, there is any FX blocks. And if that is the case, then we receive that node from the quote DSL, and we can move to the next step. And in the next step, we can transform that original uh, element that was in the code, and we can, for example, replace it with a new rewritten element. In this case, we rewrite to flat map, but we can do any other transformation, any other tree transformation imaginable, because we are just working over this abstract syntax tree, which is a tree representation of our code. So to take a quick look at how this actually works underneath the hood, um, you can very simply write your own code using string templates, uh, but it is very uh, cumbersome to work with strings. So we can also lift the string and parse it back into an expression, just like the compiler would do during the parsing phase. At this point, this is not type checked yet, but in the following phases by the compiler, the generated code that we generated here will be type checked. And we also want to bring all of these features to the editor, and Raul will show us how we can very easily do that. Yeah. So traditionally, as software developers or library maintainers, uh, we tend to follow what we see in other places. In the case of Kotlin, I think we can make it a, di a little bit different, because we don't have to stop where our library produces a binary and we distribute it in Maven Central, and then we forget about it. Right? There's a lot more of the experience of the user that we are not reaching with this approach. And Aerometa aims to solve that problem by not only letting you build compiler plugins that will enhance the features of the language, but also bring you the power to bring functional programming and your favorite library features in front of the users as they are coding. If you think about it, when you're learning a concept, you're going to go to a Stack Overflow, a post, or somewhere. But the place you're going to be doing your work and you're always going to be at the end is the editor. So Aerometa allows you to combine the compiler DSL we showed you every, uh, before and the quote template system and also work inside the IDE. It provides access to all of the IntelliJ IDEA plugins uh, API, and that works for all other editors, not just IntelliJ IDEA, but for example, ReSharper and everything else from the family of JetBrains. And in this case here, what we can see is that we are able to now implement Monad comprehensions, but not just from a language of, or a compiler point of view where the library works and runs, but also teaching the user what this feature can potentially uh, do. So here we're just going to add every, a line marker with the bind icon. And we're going to give some descriptive message as to what that feature means. And it's matching on every single expression in the source code that is a binding, that is a monad bind. For example, we saw earlier val a equals io uh, or by io of a. So that is a binding. And once uh, we see this live demo of the plugin being used, we can observe that as we bind over the context of the computation of I.O., on the left-hand side, 
we are getting like icons for bindings and we're able to explain to the user the features we're bringing them so that they can better learn and improve their experience. We don't have to leave the experience to the basic supports of the language. If your library requires special features or special context while coding, you can bring it to the masses through plugins for the IDE. Continue. So Aero Meta is a metaprogramming library and sits at the core of tooling. And you can use it even if you don't even care about functional programming uh, or Aero. But the main reason why we built Aero Meta was so that we could support a set of use cases that we understood made sense in functional programming and coding. And we are trying to use those use cases so that we can actually uh, improve the state of functional uh, programming in Kotlin. So as an ongoing effort during the development of the Aero Meta, we've been working uh, on a lot of the ergonomics that we want to improve in Aero, for example, the higher kind of types. And currently, the higher kind of types in Aero involve a lot of boilerplates. This boilerplate will all be removed when using compiler plugins. But more interesting is that we can also cooperate with the type checker, and we can make the type checker kind of aware. So in this case, as you can see in the slide, there is no need for the user to call fix anymore, which is currently a problem in many of the Aero code bases, because people have to explicitly downcast from the higher kind of type. And here in the example, you can see that all of this is removed, and it even improves the type inference here. Another thing that we are doing is we can generate optics over immutable data structures. And we can, in this way, we can offer the users a way to use dot syntax, which is very familiar to imperative users, with a convenient API to work with immutable data structures without them having to know anything about functional programming or compiler or, or optics. So with, by doing this, we can bring these features much closer to the users without having them to learn any of the heavy stuff beforehand. And through interest, we can teach the users about the internals of this machinery. So as we've already seen throughout the slides, there is also the comprehension plugin. And the comprehension plugin will actually enable this syntax for all types that structurally have a valid flat map uh, <coughs> signature, both for Java and Kotlin types. So this means that we're also bringing comprehension syntax for libraries such as RxJava and Project Reactor and many more. As some of you might have already know, we've also spoken on this on, this on a previous Lambda world. We have uh, introduced Cape 87 to propose type classes to the language. But for those that already want to be using type classes today, you can opt in with the compiler plugin, and you get a similar uh, experience that we propose in the Cape. And this way, you can also already try out these features in the language today. So as you can see here in the slide, it removes a lot of boilerplate. It is actually also combining multiple plugins. Because if you work with type classes, we often work with higher kind of types. And in this case, it removes the fix. But more interestingly, it also uh, en enables the type class syntax. This means we do not have to wrap everything in run methods anymore to enable that syntax manually. And as you can see on the call side, it also drastically improves the code because we do not have to manually pass all the type class instances anymore, in this case, IO applicative. Also, again, we don't have to downcast from the uh, resulting higher kind of type anymore, and we can just use a very convenient and concise syntax to traverse over our lists. And as we've already mentioned, we are trying to bring these features closer to the editor, closer to the user, because this is where all the users are working. And as we are writing, this is a purity plugin that will track purity and effects for us, or at least help the user to do so. In this case, to do is a throwing method, so we can alert the user that this is an impure function and that it should be suspended. And we can also uh, add and help them with refactor ex uh, actions and explanations in the IDE to help them understand why this is important and how you can refactor your code, code base to become more pure and more functional throughout time. Now I will give back the word to Raoul because we have many more ideas brewing and many more interesting stuff on the roadmaps. So the Kotlin type system is simple enough that some of these plugins can be easily added. And we just show you a few of the ones that we are already working on and that we've proven that they work, like comprehensions, higher kind of types, 
type classes, but we don't have to stop there because there's many more ideas and we need uh, help building this. So if you're interested in what you're seeing, there's a set of ideas and issues that we've been creating. And this doesn't mean that we're attempting to change the language by any means. These are all opt-in features. So these are things that you can create, you can activate in your code base for your set of users that are interested, they can activate it in their code base, but it's always opt-in. And every code that it produces is always compatible with projects in Kotlin that are not using AeroMeta. So among some of them, union types, that is already possible in Kotlin based on the structured DAX type system. Kotlin already has the notion of intersection types, and it just is not exposed to the user, but it's used internally for some of the operation. Polyadic functions that allow you to generate arbitrariety functions only for the cases when they're using the call side. For example, if I'm only using RT38 and 12, then I don't have to generate 0 to 22 because we have access to see where the call side that are uh, calling some of those functions and generate them in the local module. Macro systems, which do not require compiler plugins. So embedding functions in user code that act as macros, and then we can from meta C and expand the, in the AST, and many more. And this is just for functional programming, what we've shown you, but this is not uh, exclusively designed for functional programming. You may have built many other use cases, and we have tons of success cases in the Scala community and other communities. You know Scala Store, Scala Fix, all of this tooling, which was originally based on Scala Meta, uh, allows us to build very powerful tools that do not exist yet in the Kotlin ecosystem, but people are high in, lead, in need. For example, Scala fix to write entire code bases with very simple rewrite rules, or something like Google, where we can find types, functions, and search APIs based on shapes and not exclusively names. So yeah, I wanted to also take this time to say thank you very much to uh, the Kotlin community, because it's an excellent place uh, to collaborate. We've gotten a lot of help from people from the compiler that have helped us navigate the complexity, since it's been mostly an experience of frustration without documentation and kind of like tracing back calls and see where things are calling which. And after many months working on this project, we're finally uh, coming up with a solution that seems to be uh, stable and we hope to present you in November. So thanks to everyone in the Kotlin and compiler teams for their help. Thanks for 7 Degrees for making AeroMeta and AeroPuzzle with its sponsorship and, and this conference and everything uh, they're doing for functional programming in the community and trying to make it more accessible, not just to the people that care about the academic concepts or the academia, but everyone in the industry that can benefit from the way we build these features. I also want to take a special time to say thank you to all of the bootstrappers of AeroMeta. All of these guys have helped for the last year to make AeroMeta a reality, what we believe is going to be at the root and tooling of the Kotlin ecosystem in 2020 and at the root and tooling of functional uh, programming. And we also want to thank the entire uh, Aero community, over 150 uh, contributors that have turned Aero in what it is today. I want to take this time as well to tell you that we are an inclusive community and that we love to have you and have you help us build uh, all of these features and great stuff uh, for this growing and increasing popular programming language like Kotlin. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>